It's TK Friday. This is the joy of editing with Dave Kelly, and it's another full edit using the TK9 plugin for Photoshop. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the joy of editing with Dave Kelly on this TK Friday. Today, it's another full edit. This image comes to us by Donald Bernhardt. It was shot in Sedona. I'm calling this one Majestic Solitude. A Cedar's View of Sedona's Butte. By the way, if you don't yet own the TK9 plugin for Photoshop, you can use my promo code DK15, which normally gives you 15% off, but now through the end of August 31st, 2023, that DK15 will get you 25% off the TK9 plugin for Photoshop, along with training videos. I highly recommend that you pick up Sean's new button by button training video it goes over tk9 in great detail button by button lots of great information i highly recommend it when you use my promo code dk15 you're helping to support the joy of editing with dave kelly when you use that code i do make a small commission and this helps me to keep these videos coming to you each and every week and thank you all out there for using my promo code dk15 thank you very much well, let's go ahead and jump into this. Okay, so here's the image, and I made some basic adjustments on it. Basically used a linear profile for Donald's camera and clicked the auto button and just touched up the whites and black point a little bit. And I always use lens corrections, remove chromatic aberrations, enable profile corrections. And I just have a little bit of sharpening on here, basically the default sharpening for Lightroom. I also did just a little crop, so I'll show you. Here's my crop, just a small little crop here. Now, let me show you something. This image, I felt I wish I had a little bit more space in the bottom, and I wish this yucca plant, I believe that's what it's called, was a little bit more into the image. So I thought, let me run this into uh, Adobe Photoshop Beta and use Generative Fill, and I did that, and I'll show you the result. I just added a little bit more room on the bottom and a little bit on the right side of the image here too, just to show a little bit more of this plant. And that's all I did. Now you can download this image along with the PDF notes. You'll find those in the description below this video. There'll be Dropbox links for both the image and PDF notes. And don't forget to click on more or show more to open up that description because they'll be hidden until you open up the description by clicking more or show more. Hey, and if you have an image you'd like me to edit on a TK Friday, click on the contact me link. You'll find it in the very bottom of the description. And then we can discuss maybe doing one of your images on a TK Friday. I'd love to hear from you. Now, are you ready for TK9? I love TK9. And let me know in the comments section below if you're enjoying the new TK9 plugin for Photoshop. I'd love to hear from you. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. It really helps to support the joy of editing. When you do that, I really appreciate it. And now all I need to do is right-click on the image and go to Edit In Photoshop 2023. But I'm already there, so let's go there right now. And here we are. Now, I'm really enjoying TK9, and I'm exploring different areas. So sometimes when you see me do one thing here in TK9, there's different ways of doing that same thing, but a lot of times I'm exploring different ways of doing things. So I'm playing around with the new blend if stuff, which I really love. And let me know what you think in the comment section below with the new blend if features in TK9. I think it's revolutionary and I love it. And it makes blend if so much easier to work with. But ultimately you have to decide which techniques work the best for you. But I'm just showing you different ways of doing things. But Pick the ones that you like the best and incorporate those into your workflow. And don't forget about the PDF notes. You're always going to have those as a reference. So if you want to say, how did he do that? You can go back and look it up in the PDF notes. All right, moving on to step one. Save sky, foreground, and midtones three as channels. We're setting ourselves up for success. I'm doing something a little different this week. I think this might be my workflow for balance and contrast. What I'm doing is going up to the luminosity mask button and clicking it, clicking on midtones three, and that just protects shadows and highlights from clipping, right? When I make my color grading adjustments, but I'm going to save that as a channel. So click this button right here and save that as a channel. I'm just calling this mids three. And that saves out as a channel. When I click OK, you'll see it down here in the channel. See mids three. And now I can X out of here. I don't need this anymore. So we can X out of here. And now what we're going to do is we're going to save out a sky channel. And it's so simple with TK9. Hold your command or control key down 
and click on the sky button that will save you out of sky channel very quick and easy right there and then hold your command or control key down and double click the sky button and that will save you out of foreground channel and that's all we need mids three sky and foreground and now we have a selection here i'm just going to deselect that i don't really need that selection because i have these channels now i want to start out by doing a balance and contrast on the foreground so what we'll do is click on the color grading tool now this is important this next step command on a mac control on a pc hold your command or control key down and click on the mass calculator in either the combo or the cx panel Either one will work. They're the same. So when you do that, when you hold your command or control key down and click, that'll keep this calculator open because I'm going to do two different things here. What I want to do first is click on MIDS 3 and click this button right here, and that applies it as a mask. You see right there? And then we're going to click on foreground, and now I want to intersect the foreground with that mask by clicking this X for intersect. And it just makes the foreground get that MIDS 3 adjustment, if you can see it right there. And if I click this button right here, you can actually see the mask. You see it right there? Pretty cool. And that's so fast and simple to do. I do believe this is going to be my new workflow. And then to go back to the image view, just click this button again. So anytime you have a layer and you click this button, you can see what the mask looks like. So that's a really handy feature. So I'm going to click it again and go back to the image. Now we can make some color grading adjustments. I'm going to start off by adjusting my shadows. So we'll click this button right here, which is for shadows. And I'm just going to pull it back. Now, you don't see any change until you release your mouse click. You see that? I'm at minus 15. And I decided on like a minus 28, like right there. Next, I'll go to midtone. So click on that midtone button. And I just want to open up those midtones a little bit, not too much, to like on my notes, I have it at a plus 18. Okay. I do a little color grading here too. But let's move on to highlights next, and I'll come back to the midtones. So click on the highlight button, and then I open those highlights up to like a 39. So right here, a 39. So here's my before, and here's my after. Looking good. Now, I do a little bit of a color grade. Now, for color grading, let's go back to midtones. I do that in the midtone, so I'm going to click on the midtone button. See your cursor right here? This is what I call pinpoint accuracy. Wherever you click you'll see that circle move too. So if I click into the reds, you'll see the circle move into the reds or the blues or the greens, okay? And I use like a warm tone, just a slight little warm color grade, maybe favoring a little bit yellow into green a little bit, maybe somewhere right about there. I'm gonna go ahead and click right here and type the actual number I have for my notes. And that number is 858B79, that's a hex code. And then you have to click this button to accept it. And you can see that is my color grade for my notes right there. So if you want to use my color grade number, you can go ahead and get it from the notes. Okay, now let's move on to the sky. Now we need another color grading tool. And we have this color grading tool here. So let's click the plus. And now we add another color grading tool. And now we're going to go back to the mass calculator. But let's do an experiment here. I haven't tried this yet. So let's see if this works. Last time I got midtones 3 and added it to the layer. This time, let's see what happens if I come to sky and apply that to the layer by clicking this button. And now let's see what happens if I can intersect a midtones 3 into that sky. I haven't tried this. I think it'll work. Midtones 3, X to intersect. And yes, it intersects into the sky. If I click this button right here, you can see there it is up in the sky. So that works too. So again, there's many ways of doing things here. You could put midtones three in first and then intersect the sky or put the sky in first and intersect midtones three. Either way will work. And now for some color grading, I'm only using midtones and highlights. So we'll start out with midtones. So I'll click on the midtone button and I just want to darken up the midtones and I think a little bit more right, right there. So that's the midtones. And then I want to give them a little bit of blue color grade. So somewhere right around here, I think looks good. I like that. And then let's go to highlights. And what I want to do is just uh, pull my highlights back a little bit. So let's do that. I'm going to take them back to right here, I think. Yeah. So here's my before and here's my after. And I think that looks pretty good. Now let's look at the overall before after. Here's the before after button. So I'm going to click it. So there's the before and now the after. I don't need the mass calculator. Remember, I double click the mass calculator to keep it open. Now we can click the X to close it. Now I have my combo panel back. 
back. The next thing I want to do is just darken down some of the darker areas on this butte just to bring out a little bit of texture and contrast in the dark areas. So to do that, I'm going to grab, and now we can X out of this color grading tool to reveal the multi mass panel. Nothing changes here. I just want to get a curves adjustment layer, a black mask, just to hide what I'm doing because I'm going to put this in a multiply blend mode just to darken the image. And I don't really want to see the image go dark. I know it's going to go dark. And now I want to get a zone mask. So I'm going to click on the zone mask button. And I'm just looking for some dark tones up in here, like maybe right up around here. Click OK. And now we can tighten this up. So what I'll do is I'll take this slider here and I'll drag it in to somewhere right around here to really isolate those dark areas. You see that? And then I'll take this slider and lighten that up so I get a little stronger effect when I start to burn that. And I'll be burning through a selection, by the way. Now I want to output that to a black mask, painting with a white brush through a selection. And I'm going to use an opacity of like 20% and paint over this, over these dark areas right here. Now I don't have to worry about the sky because it's only affecting dark areas. So I'm going to make my brush a little bit smaller. And again, I said I want to have about 20% opacity. I'm just typing my two key and I'm just going to start painting on here. You see that on some of these dark areas all around here and just take your time really. I sped the video up because I don't want to waste all your time but sometimes I lift the brush and I'll paint over an area again just to make the effect a little darker. But there it is. Now let's take a look. Here is the before and here's the after but see that little bit of texture pops out of there. That's pretty cool. I think I want a little bit more right in here so I'm going to lift a couple times and paint again. And right in here, right over here again, maybe in here and here. And I think that's good, but take your time. Here's the before and here is the after. Now I use the curves adjustment layer in the multiply blend mode, but I could have just as easily have used a burn tool to do that as well. But again, I'm showing you different ways of doing different things. You use the one you like the best. The next thing I want to do is burn down some of the green areas down around here, like the yucca plant and some of the green areas. And to do that, I'll use a different technique for burning. I'll do, I'll use a burn tool this time. So what I need to do is generate a mask just to target these green areas, greenish yellow areas. And to do that, I think a color mask will work. So let's click on the color mask button and I'm going to select some of the green tones in here, like right about here. Click OK. You can see they're more yellow, right? But that gives us a pretty nice selection here. Now we can really tighten it up. I'm going to take this slider right here, this feathering slider, and drag it into the left. And you see how that really starts to tighten that up? Let's lighten this up with this slider here. Lighten that up. And now we can tighten it up even more by dragging this slider, this top slider, into the right a little bit. See how I can really target that area. Maybe right about there. I think that looks pretty good right there. And now what we need to do is output that to a burn tool. Now this burn tool has two sides. You can use either side. I always use the gray side. This gives you a 50% gray layer. This gives you a transparent pixel layer. I'm going to use the uh, gray layer, 50% gray. And you'll notice I have a selection. So I'll be painting through a selection. And I think I'm going to use like 30% opacity. So right now I'm at 20%. Let's type my three key and that gets me to 30% opacity. And now I'll just burn this area, darken it down with the burn tool. And here I am burning. I went ahead and sped the video up a little bit, but I'm just burning over here. Sometimes I lift the brush to make certain areas darker, but it's very simple. And I might add a lot of fun. So let's check it out. Here is the before and here is after. Now, if it's too strong, you always have this opacity. You can pull this back if you need to. But I think it looks really good. I'm going to leave it like that. Now, as I study this image over in this corner here, there's a lot of midtones over here that I would like to darken up, even some back in here. But let's try another different way of burning. And now with TK9, we have these new possibilities. So let's see what we can do here. Now, you'll notice by this selection, indicator that I have a selection. To get rid of a selection, just click this button right here on the combo panel or here in the CX and that deselects your selection because I'm going to use a burn tool from the combo panel. And again, just like when you output a burn tool, you have two sides, left side, which is a 50% gray layer, right side, which is a blank pixel layer. I'm just going to use the left side for a 50% gray layer. And that sets me up with a 50% gray layer in the soft light blend mode. And it gives me a black brush. 
Now, I'm going to use Blend Diff on the layer. So I'm going to click this button right here. And what I want to do is I want to target midtones. I experimented with midtones one, two, and three, and I chose three, worked out the best for me. Okay, and what I want to do now with 30% opacity, I'll just darken these areas with the burn tool right in here, like this, over into here. Okay, blend diff is only allowing me to work on midtones three. And right down in here, if I lift my brush and paint again, it's going to give me a little stronger effect but something like that. But check this out. You see this exclude checkbox right here? I'm gonna click this on, nothing will happen. But watch what happens when I click on exclude greens. Watch the green tones down in here. See how it drops out the green tones? Watch, I'll click it again to shut that off. And see how it's protecting those green tones? Cause there's green tones down there in the mid tones and that, when I shut this off, it's darkening them, but when I turn it on, it protects them. So here's my before, and here's my after darkening that area. If the effect's too strong, you could lower the layer opacity. But that was another way of burning using Blend If on the layer. So pretty cool, right? Great possibilities here in TK9. Don't you love TK9? I'm going to go ahead and click the X to close the Edit Blend If. So next what I want to do is I want to dodge all the light areas in the foreground. And I'm going to use a similar technique to what I just did with burning, and that will be with dodging. So the first thing I want to do is grab a dodge tool. And again, you have two sides, 50% gray or transparent. I'm going to use the 50% gray. I'm just getting it off the combo panel right here. So there's my dodge layer right there. Now, I'm going to get a mass calculator because what I want to do is protect my sky. Remember, I only want the foreground. So what I'll do this time is grab the foreground, but I don't want to apply that to a layer mask. I want to apply it to a selection. So I'm going to click this button here. So when I click this, I will have a selection and you can see by the selection indicator. In other words, whatever I dodge will only be dodging inside of the foreground, not into the sky. The sky will be protected. Now, remember, I want to do highlights. So let's go and click this button to go into Edit Blend If, and we could look at some lights here. Uh, let me click this button here. When I click it, you can see the area that's getting affected. You notice the entire image goes like magenta pink here. That means the whole image is being selected right now. But if I click on light one, you can see that is lights one right there. If I click on lights two, you can see the areas it's targeting. So it's gonna target a lot of the highlights on the tree here. I don't care about the sky because remember, I'm painting through a selection, the sky is protected and I can paint on this butte back here. So this is pretty good. I think it's a good starting point, but I'll show you, I can come back and change this later. So that's what I want. So let me click this button again to shut off the overlay. And now I'm protected. And with an opacity, right now I'm at 10%. I'm going to type my two key and go to 20%. And I will start just dodging this, all the highlights in this image here. I sped the video up here, but I can be very loose in what I'm doing because don't forget that blend if is protecting me, only targeting those light two areas. And at times I'll make my brush smaller as I'm doing right here and I'm painting on the butte back here. I'm just looking for highlights, just areas that I can bring out a little bit, just to add a little bit more contrast, and it just gives a little more detail. But let's take a look. Here is my before, and here is my after. Again, before and after. I think I can go a little stronger, so what I'm going to do is, right now I'm on lights two. Let me click on lights one, and you notice how I get a lot more effect at lights one, then lights two, this is lights two, this is lights one. But what if I wanted to go somewhere in between there? Let me go back to lights two. Lights one was too strong, so I can take this slider and I can drag it to the left. See how I can go right here? Now lights one is the slider drug the whole way to the left. You see there, if I click on lights one, it's the whole way touching the edge. But let me go back to lights two, just to show you. All I'm doing is taking this bottom slider and dragging it to the left and stopping when I think I have enough of the adjustment like right there. So here is the before and here is the after, just hitting those highlights, okay? So I think I like that. And don't forget, you always have the opacity here. You could take it back. And I took mine back a little bit to somewhere right around like 81, 82. 
here's the before and here's the after, just so I don't go overboard here. But pretty nice. But this is one nice thing about Blend If. After you're done with the adjustment, you can go and tweak things up. And don't forget, you always have this overlay to see the areas that you're targeting. Don't forget to click the pink double arrow again to shut off the overlay because you don't want pink on your image. Now I want to burn all the shadow areas in the foreground. Now right now I have a selection, so let me go ahead and click this button to deselect it. Let me close Blend If right now. What I want to do is get a burn tool and I'm going to grab it right off the uh, combo panel, the left side for the 50% gray. So we're going to grab that. Now we're going to get blend if edit blend if so click this button and now I need to find a dark tone. I want a shadow tone. So let's click on this button here so we can see an overlay. The entire image is pink, meaning the entire image will get the adjustment. So now if we click on darks one, we can start seeing the areas that it's targeting. That's dark one, this is darks two, this is darks three, and this is darks four, and that's gonna get it. Now here, I didn't have to protect the sky because there are no dark tones in the sky, so I really don't have to worry about the sky. But these are the tones I wanna target right here, and that's gonna be good. Now let me shut off the pink overlay by clicking this button again. And now let me try 10%. I'm going to do 10% here. I'm going to type my one key. I have the black brush, which the burn tool sets me up with. And what I want to do now is just start to darken down shadows. I went ahead and sped up the video, but I'm just liberally painting over this entire foreground here. Some areas I'm lifting the brush and painting again. Now at times I will make the brush smaller. And when I get to the tree, you'll see the brush will get a little bit smaller because I just want to concentrate in certain areas and lift the brush a couple times to make certain areas a little bit darker. And I'll even touch up this butte a little bit. I already got it at the beginning. Well, let's check it out. Here is the before and here is the after. So again, the before and the after. So I really like that. You know, when you pair dodging with burning, you get a lot of depth and dimension in the image, and I really like that. So here's without dodging and burning, and here's with dodging and burning. So I think it looks good. And don't forget, as always, you can pull back this opacity if you need to. On my notes, I did pull it back to around 81%. But here I like it. I think I'm just going to leave it the way it is. Let's take a look at the overall before and after. So I'm going to click my button on my combo panel for before and after. Here's before and here's after. So it's looking really good. I think I want to pop a little bit more contrast in the sky here. I'm going to do something a little different I've never done here before. It's going to be paint contrast with a twist. On my CX panel, I'm going to click the TK Actions, and I have mine set to stay open all the time. And by the way, you can set that by clicking this hamburger menu here and check on Auto Close TK Actions to make it close after you run an action. But I have mine unchecked, so it won't auto close. And now I'm going to get a paint contrast action. We're going to click this button right here. I'm just going to click OK because I don't care what color paint it gives me. I'm not going to use a brush. It's given me a 50% gray brush right there, as you can see, but I don't really care about that, and you'll find out in a sec. But here's my paint contrast. It's a blank pixel layer in a hard mix blend mode set at fill 15%. What I want to do is click on my mass calculator, and what I want is the sky. So I'm going to click on sky and click on this button to apply it to the layer. You can see the sky is being selected right there. Now, I want to fill this blank pixel layer, so I'm going to click on it, and click this fill button and I want to fill this with black which will only target the darkest tones right now my contents are set for 50% gray this is a drop down click on it and click on black and click OK so it fills that with black and as you can see right there here's before and here's after see how it's just targeting the darkest tones in the sky so that's pretty cool so that's my twist Instead of painting with a brush, I'm just doing the whole thing at one shot by filling this with black paint. And now I want to work on the highlights. So I'm going to do the same thing, only I'll fill it with white paint and I'll show you. So what we're going to do is grab another paint contrast action. So click on it and just click OK again. We don't care about the paint color here. It's going to give you 50% gray for a brush. And again, blank pixel layer, uh, hard mix blend mode, 15% fill. And now I want to get a mask calculator again because I only want to apply this to the sky. So click on sky and I'll apply that sky mask to the blank pixel layer. And now click on the transparent pixel layer and click the fill button on either the Combo or CX panel. 
but this time I don't want black. I want white just to target the light tones. Okay, so click on white and click OK. And see all the sky got really light. Okay, so here's the before and here's the after. Now, I feel the effects too strong for the light and the dark contrast, so I pulled the fill back on each of them. And I ended up liking 12%. And now I'll go to the dark contrast layer and take that back to 12% too. I'll go to the light tones now. Here's before and after that adjustment. And here's the dark tones before and after. And then if you want to see both, here's without the extra contrast in the sky. And here it is with. So I think that really helps out. We're getting closer to the finish line. And at this point, I always like to try a color luminosity action. So I'm going to click this button right here. I love this. And I told you last week uh, to set yourself up with a preset for a color loom starting point. In other words, this is the starting point. And when I shut this layer off, you don't see any change. Okay. So you could save this as a preset. All you need to do is come up here to the hamburger menu and click on save black and white preset. Give it a name and save it out in case you ever need to reset this back to defaults. Okay. So I started out with, I just start out with reds and go through each tone and I lighten or darken and see which I like the best. Now I'm not even looking at my notes, but I'm just going to start working with each one of these colors here. So, cause each head it's a little different and my eyes may be different today. So let me start to, I can lighten the reds or darken. And I think I'm going to darken those reds up to maybe right about there. I like that. Now let's play with the yellows so I can darken the yellows. No, maybe, I don't know, maybe right about here looks good. Now let's go with the greens. We can lighten the greens or no, I think I want to darken the greens. I'm going to pull the greens back to right around here. Now let's work with the cyans up in the sky. I don't want to get them too dark, but maybe right about here. And let's work with blues. We can lighten those blues or darken them up. I'll just darken them up a little bit. And I don't think there's much in the way of magenta here. No, not really. So I'll just leave that there. So let's check it out. Here is the before and here's the after. Again, before and after. I may darken the reds up a little bit more. So here's before and here's after before and after I like it. Okay. And it's all subjective and adjust it the way it looks best for you. At this point, I think I want to do another balance and contrast, but of the entire image. So what I'm going to do is X out of this blend if, and I haven't even been using it, so it hasn't really been doing anything. But anyway, we're going to click on this blend if button here to generate a mask. However, I'm not going to use a mask. I'm going to use my midtones three to protect shadows and highlights from clipping. So I'll click that and I'm going to output this to a color grading tool, but I'll hold my shift key down. And this is a little tip. Hold your shift key down and click on your color grading tool. And you'll notice this indicator. If I double click right here, you can see there's my midtones three that's applied to this layer. So let me click cancel here. So Midtones 3 through Blend If is protecting the highlights and shadows from clipping. And now I can make some adjustments here. And I'll adjust shadows, midtones, and highlights. I'll start with shadows. I'll click on the shadows button. And I just want to darken up the shadows a little bit. Just somewhere, you know, right around there. And then I'm going to go to midtones. And I just want to slightly lighten up the midtones. Maybe right here. Right there. And now let's go to highlights. So I'll click on the highlight button. And I just want to open up those highlights to somewhere yeah, right here. Yeah, that works. So here's the before and here's the after. So the before and the after. And I think that looks good. So now I want to check for oversaturated color. So let's X out of the color grading tool. Click on the saturation vibrance mask button. And then we're going to just use saturation one. And the light areas are the colors that have the most saturation. And I'm going to output that to a hue saturation adjustment layer. And now remember, this mask is targeting the mostly saturated colors. So I'll start out with master. And on the saturation, watch when I pull this back. See, even if I take it the whole way off, you don't lose all the color because it's only the most saturated colors. So what I want to do is just pull this back, I think to like a minus five, and now I'll work on each color. So we'll start with reds. And I think I'm just going to take the reds back a little bit. And I think not much to like a minus five, I think is good. And now I'll go to yellows. And let's see, I want to pull the yellows back to like a minus 10. And now let's check the greens out. So let me click on greens. Now, if I pull the greens up, you don't see much change if I go either way to the left or right here. 
So I'll just double click that. No use adjusting that. Now let's go to cyans and let's see. Not much is happening in cyans. Now if I drag this the whole way to the right, you can see there's some cyan in there. But it's not affecting too much and it's good. So I'll just double click this and leave it where it was. Now we'll go to blues and I think I'll take the blues back. And yeah, I think that's really going to help. So I'm going to go back to I think right here like a minus 30. And now let's check out magentas. Here's magenta. And let's drag it to the right, to the left. Not much is happening there, so we can just double click it. Now let's check out the overall before and after. Here is the before and here's the after. So it's minimal, but this is a really great step to add your workflow to really make sure you have your colors right where you want them. And this drop down lets you work on all these different colors along with the master. So pretty nice. A couple more steps and we're done. I want to add a vignette, just a basic vignette. So open up your TK actions if they're not open by clicking the TK button. Mine's already open, so I'm going to click vignette. And I always take the Gaussian blur just the way it is and click OK. And now what I want to do is protect the deepest shadows. But let's take a look here. Here's my before and here's my after. I want to protect my deepest shadows from getting crushed. So here's what I'll do. I'm going to come up and click on this blend if button right here for layer blend if now when you add that vignette sometimes you can crush the shadows and they get a little too dark so to protect that i always like to try no darks one first so we'll click this button and you see how that's protecting those dark tones and this is the range it's protecting right here and i also like to try no darks too so let me click on there and you can see now it's protecting all these dark tones right in here the Aries and pink are getting the adjustment. So here's the before and here's the after. I usually like no darks one, but in this case, I like no darks too. So I'm going to use that. And then what I'll do is I think I'll take my opacity and I think I'm going to increase it to maybe 40%. Yeah, 40% right there. So here's the before and here's the after. So that's pretty cool. I have one final thing to do when I was starting out and I sent the original image over to Photoshop beta and added this section on the side here there's a little line here that you can see after the edit so we can fix that i'm just going to add a blank pixel layer right above here and use my remove tool set to sample all layers remove after each stroke and i'll fix this right here very easily and i might get rid of some of the uh, things down in here that don't really add to the composition okay so all i'm doing is just coming down like this and seeing how that yeah see that gets rid of that line here's a little bit in here and everywhere I see that line, I may miss something. Again, again, I'm doing a tutorial, right? So if I miss something, please forgive me. But you see what to do. Anywhere you see a little line, you can come here and fix it. And then I'll just patch up some of these areas by just painting over some of this stuff. I'll speed up the video. But I really love this remove tool. Man, it is a miracle worker. It does such a great job. If you need to clean stuff up, it's it it really does a great job. So I'm just looking for things that catch my eye that are not that attractive in the image okay so i'm just cleaning them up and just about there i'm gonna get rid of these things and i think i'm good well let's see how far we come let me click the before after button here's the before so i started out here and now i end up here so i like this edit i hope you give this one a try well another tk friday comes to a close thank you for joining me today i really appreciate each and every one of you out there Thank you, Donald, for the use of your image today. Don't forget to download it and also download the PDF notes. Hey, if you enjoyed today's tutorial, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to this channel, please subscribe and click that bell notification icon and then click all for notifications so you'll definitely get notified when I upload a new tutorial. Well, I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly, and I will see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.